Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture, and today we're going to be talking about the newest album from Kyle Kraft and his new band for which this album is named Showboat Honey. I feel like I should be less surprised that we already have a new Kyle Kraft album. And here's the thing, when you look at how much music Kyle Kraft has put out over the past couple of years, it shouldn't be that surprising, given how between Dolls of Highland and Full Circle Nightmare, he did put out an entire covers project, and given that he now has a full backing band called Showboat Honey, it makes some degree of sense that he'd want to have something for the general public sooner rather than later. And of course I wasn't about to complain, Kyle Kraft has been one of the most startling breakout talents of the 2010s and his two albums of original material have been in my top 10 for their respective years. A huge voice, a distinctive instrumental style, and some of the best writing you will get in rock. Period. That being said, when artists start churning out projects seemingly every year or sometimes more than one a year, I do get worried that the content and the refinement might suffer. And given how potent Kyle Kraft is as a writer, I genuinely wondered if he'd have enough fresh material. But apparently he and his band were working at such a pace that apparently he had an album ready even earlier than this. But then a quick gut check moment had him step back and record another full project of material. From there, the best songs were chosen. And what was even more promising, at least to me, was the fact that Kyle Kraft had apparently brought back some of the recording and production style that was more homegrown than he had back on Dolls of Highland, which is one of my one serious nitpicks from Full Circle Nightmare, so this could well kick a lot of ass. So alright, he's not wasting time, neither should I. What did Kyle Kraft and his band deliver with Showboat Honey? Well, you know, I really wish that my deep-seated concerns about projects that I should have every reason to love would just stop coming true. And yeah, I really hate to be the bringer of bad news with this one, but Showboat Honey, it's a step back for Kyle Kraft. Almost across the board, too, from production to writing to even some of his delivery. Yes, I had really high expectations, and yes, I was prepared for the sound to shift with the addition of more of a backing band. But what I wasn't prepared for was an admittedly good album that just pales completely in comparison with what has been done before, especially given the heights that I know Kyle Kraft can reach reach. And what's so damn disappointing is that it seemed to come out of good and reasonable intentions too that just don't stick the landing. This review is going to come across as more negative than ultimately it'll be, but that's just because I'm disappointed that this is good not great. And I feel like we have to start with Kyle Kraft himself, because he is the draw here. A powerhouse singer, a huge personality, a great songwriter. He is the reason anybody is checking out this project, not the newfound band behind him. And yet, you can tell he was trying to be a team player by nestling his vocals a little bit deeper into the mix, give the guitars a little more priority, tacking on a few more layers of reverb and organic cushion and a deliberate callback to some of those earlier tones on the back half of Dolls of Highland, and at least to me, it's the wrong choice, hands down. I'm not going to ignore how Kyle Kraft can be an overwhelming presence on songs, but further dampening his dramatic range and showing more emphasis to a band who plays with retro textures but are just not as dynamic or vibrant as he is, that's muting your greatest strength. There isn't a song on this album that comes close to the glorious, personality-driven highlights of the last two albums, and when you have a songwriter who has a reputation for lyrical intricacy and flair, why would you intentionally muddy or bury that vocal pickup and unfortunately Kyle Kraft doesn't escape blame himself here. Beyond co-producing his project, so he clearly intended for this, I get him stretching his vocal range, but without more consistent multi-tracking or support or proper emphasis within the mix, the falsetto just does not have the body in the same way his belting does, and nearly always sets some really good songs back. I'm sorry, it just did not work for me. But alright, fine, I can respect Kyle Kraft trying to draw more emphasis to his band and give the instrumentals more weight and tune. So why am I left with the lingering feeling that the melodic flourishes are just not nearly as interesting this time around? Now, part of this does circle back to how both Dolls of Highland and especially Full Circle Nightmare, they had prominent glittery melody lines steeped in glam rock and alternative country beyond just the guitar line, often through horns or harmonica or blast of keys and organ. So shifting to some darker smolder on the guitar lead 
blades with some firmer grooves. It's a change of pace, but it also leads to a project that by necessity doesn't feel nearly as diverse or colorful, especially with those melodies on the lead guitar fighting to get through the thicker cushion of effects and AM rock texture. And no, fellow critics, burying your strongest and most distinctive melodic elements, it's not a step towards maturity or complexity. It's a sign that you're not playing to your strengths or that the tunes weren't strong enough to carry this project in the same way on their own. And look, Kyle Craft has always showed some of his influences, but one of the reasons why those first two albums stuck out regardless is because the songs were so dynamic, merging his influences into a strong, distinctive core that could feel remarkably forward-thinking regardless of that. Here, though, with less instrumentation, a little less color, it becomes a lot easier to point to early 70s Rolling Stones or Elton John or T-Rex and highlight those obvious parallels, and leads to a project that seems to have less unique personality. And here's the exasperating thing. If I step away from that, I can still argue the album's mixed pretty well. It sounds good. The bass grooves, they have presence. The acoustics are clear. The piano lines are bright enough. The songs are well balanced. There are hooks here. But it feels like the tracks that went for broke on previous projects have been muted this time around. Which is really strange to say when there are cuts that can bring a similar sense of scope in the mix balance and the weight that they're trying for. Like the smolder on Broken Mirror Pose, the plucky jangle of Oh Lucky Hand, the sweeping strings accented piano ballad Death Wish Blue, the tight groove and the sparks of garage rock guitar on Too Ugly for New York, the, to the choppy acoustics and the saloon piano that kick into She's Lily Riptide. It's probably the closest to any song off the previous couple albums, but it wouldn't be among the better cuts. And that's the most biting indictment. At his best, Kyle Kraft could transcend old school AM rock to something that's entirely unique and his own, both modern and going to the past. But this album, it would fill out that old retro 70s playlist and ultimately would wind up getting rotated out. But all right, fine. What I've always praised the most coming out of Kyle Kraft is the songwriting, and I'll give him this right out of the gate. If there's someone who is allowed to take pot shots at a certain critical outlet for utterly screwing him over and then misinterpreting him like he does on Broken Mirror Pose and him calling them out, yeah, Kyle Kraft's got the right to do that. It's a great moment of catharsis. And it does make sense heading into a project that might be Kyle Kraft's most blunt and direct to date, taking the whirling night nightmare of complicated relationships that saturate a full circle nightmare, and then focusing on the hard juxtapositions between hitting life's peaks and valleys simultaneously. And it's hard to avoid the feeling like his language has almost purposefully narrowed its focus, where there won't be room for many miscommunications to get his message across while still painting some interesting scenes. And I'll admit this is another sticking point for me. See, one of the reasons why Dolls of Highland and Full Circle Nightmare were so brilliant is that they took the iconography and the detail of old school glam rock and then fused them with modern framing and emotional nuance, which was set in the text unless you were purposely setting out to miss the point. So a response to that where there isn't the same room for misinterpretation or ambiguity, uh, well, it's fine, but it removes a level of complexity that might make more sense if you're going for broader, more direct strokes in the instrumentation. but the less direct production seems to be going in the opposite direction. You would expect the writing to be more thorny and knotted and complicated, not less. Now that's not saying that there aren't some great moments here. I love the post-breakup masturbation ode that is Oh Lucky Hand, the exasperated consolation to a fellow friend bottoming out on Black Hole Joyride that does have some wit to it, and he's got a knack for sundering overblown arrogance like few others will. From the burned out superstar on Buzzkill Caterwall to the messy infatuation post-swingers party on Johnny Free and Easy, to the overprivileged party girl that seems like she's not giving him the time of day on She's Lily Riptide, except they are still fucking, she's bottoming out, and maybe that love is worth chasing after all, even if his poetry is terrible. And you know what, to Kyle Kraft's credit, he's not cynical enough to forsake his romantic side. Bed of Needles number two is your love in the face of apocalypse song that apparently is not an obvious love letter to heroin, but to his future spouse, and following it with the genuine sincerity of Death Wish Blue, it's a nice touch. But between a few passing references on that song and Sunday 
driver. It's hard not to feel like the they that are referenced here with false accusations, they've left a lingering bitterness where it's not hard to draw a parallel to you know who. Especially when he shouldn't have afforded them the time of day. They aren't worth it. And it's frustrating because, again, these are good songs. But instead of pulling us into Kyle Kraft's stylized, amazingly detailed, incredibly compelling modern world, and not showcasing the flair that was so compelling, he's going inwards. And admittedly, it's good, but there was more. I wanted to see that. So as a whole, look folks, I really wanted to love this. The last two Kyle Kraft albums have made my year-end list time and time again. I give this project over a dozen listens to see if it would really stick, and... It just doesn't. Again, I want to stress that the core of talent is still here, and there are good songs. Hell, I'd argue the album is consistently good, and I had high expectations going in. But between falsetto that really hits a bum note, production that takes those vocals and places them deeper into the mix for no adequately explained reason, to match melodies that are just not as colorful or interesting, and writing that may still have some of that wit and flair, but seemingly colored by a sour bitterness that just doesn't hit, and it's not even touching on the oddly abortive song structures in a couple places, I'm just left with the dispiriting feeling that this just is not as good as it should be. Admittedly, these are all harsh things that where I can still say that there's enough quality to put this at a light 7 out of 10, but for one of the most promising artists I've heard in the 2010s, it is a misstep. If you want to get on board with Kyle Kraft, check out Dolls of Highland or Full Circle Nightmare first, but otherwise, look, I still got hopes for him, and maybe this will just prove to be a misstep where the details will get fine-tuned, he'll recover quickly. Again, he co-produced this album, a few tweaks there could make this really good, and the output is proven he can get there. Let's just hope that he recovers sooner rather than later. That's all I'm saying. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. As I said, I knew this was going to come out more negative than it is, because this is a good album, but I was hoping for one of the best of the year. He's done it twice before, and that's the real downside. It's the Debbie Downer of the whole thing. But if you want to buy or stream it, links in the description below. I recommend you do. I want to see him continue to make more music, so please do. And I got the poll up there and the comments, so... Please, you guys, tell me your opinion, because I know some people this is working for them more, but it just isn't for me. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And hey, if you guys actually are looking for the next episode of Billboard Breakdown dropping tomorrow, link's in the card right over there for the second channel. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.